Stephen Ellinger, you are the, uh, the Bureau Chief of the New York Times in London. Uh, so Steve, let me ask you a question from your observations in London. What is the impact of Brexit, not just on Britain, but what do you think it will be on the European Union? Well, first of all, it was a shock. Um, it should have been clear from the polls that something was happening and that it could have won, but people you, you know, have confirmation bias and they can't believe what they don't want to believe. And many Europeans and many Britons, too, didn't want to believe that Brexit was going to happen. Now, I think there's still a lot of people in Europe who think it won't happen. I think they're wrong. I think it will happen. And I think there are a lot of people in Britain who think the Europeans will bend to give Britain a better deal. And I think they're wrong. That's not going to happen either. So in a way, it's sad. I mean, it is a divorce. It's been a long time coming. I, I think Britain never really felt itself at the heart of the European True. Union and vice versa. It was transactional for Britain when it joined 40 something years ago. It, it, it really needed to join, but, do but th it no longer does, I don't think. But do you think there are implications for the future of the other 27 members? Or is this, is this the start of a gradual fragmentation, if you like, or dissolution of the EU? Well, that's the great question. I don't think so, because I mean, at least the first reaction has been more uh, wake-up call, a prise de conscience. I mean, people realize there are things at stake here, and I think it's pulled countries together. It's made them more aware of the benefits of the European Union, which is very bad at telling people why it's good for them. And even in the new countries, the, the so-called Visegrad countries, who don't like to be called new anymore, but who are closer to Russia um, physically, and, and um, there, I, I, I think the attractiveness of the EU has gone up rather than down, particularly in countries like Slovakia and the Czech Republic. Um, so I, I don't feel any great, I mean, there, there are centrifugal forces, but they tend to be stronger, frankly, in the old countries of Europe, like the Netherlands and France, than in the new countries. So I, I think it will hold together, but it will have to change. The question is, can it change? Does it have the political space to change? Does it have the ideas? Does it have the people? It's a very interesting question. As the Chinese might say, we live in interesting times. Steve Erlinger, thank you so much for being on WPC-TV. Thank you.